Now, with, without further delay, let's get to setting up your home studio. Now, for some of you, <clears throat> maybe you've, you know, checked out, maybe you've done some courses, maybe you've seen my blog post on how to set up a home studio. Maybe you're already an amateur potter. Wherever you are, whichever stage you're at, the ones who have a home studio, great. You guys can check out this, um, you know, video and see if you, uh, you know, if there's anything missing and if there is, arrange for it. If not, you can head to the next chapter, but definitely go through it. There are some, you know, random points that come up when I'm talking and giving a lesson and those pointers can get missed out, right? Um, so make sure you arrange for the stuff that you don't have. Now, that is if you have a home studio. For those of you who are completely starting from scratch and don't have anything, this is for you, yeah? Um, before I go forward in showing you what we are setting up, know that in the text below, I have put down each and every equipment or supply that is that you need for this course with the supplier's name in India. Yeah, the ones I've suggested are, there are two to three suggestions I have for, the, for India. And if you're out of this country, just know that these supplies are super basic and you'll get it in any ceramic supply store uh, in your city or country. And a lot of them are even available online. So the stuff that I'm going to be working with, you will, you definitely won't have any issue shopping for them. Yeah. And for people in India, the sub I have put down the exact supply stores that even my stuff is from, yeah? So you'll uh, be getting it exactly from them. Okay, so now that you know that you have the suppliers, I'm not going to be talking about them in this video. Uh, and any furniture, any carpentry that I'm going to be talking about in this, uh, in this, in this video, uh, know that I'm also going to be putting down the dimensions in the text below. So those dimensions work for me and my studio, which basically mean that they mostly work for everybody because I design my uh, furniture not only for my size and my height, but also for, you know, the, the students that come here. And, you know, my students come from all cultures and, and cities and countries. So I've kind of gotten a, uh, come to a generic um, like a like a, a custom dimension that works for most of us, yeah. So I'm going to be putting down the dimensions also in the text below, so you can check those out. So again, I'm not going to be mentioning that in the video. Okay, <clears throat> let's get started and let's set up our home studio. First things first, a potter's wheel. I use an electric wheel and I use a Shimpo RK55 electric wheel. I love it. I've been using it for years. I highly recommend it. Any other potter's wheel from any other company, go for it. As long as you know you know that you know it's been reviewed well and potters in your city are using it, go for it. I have no problem. Any electric wheel works. Not only electric wheel, any manual wheel also works. Yeah, There are different kinds of wheels all over the country. Do your own research and see what works for you. Yeah. Okay, so you have an electric wheel or a potter's wheel basically. Then you have clay. Yeah, I'm going, to, I don't have clay right here, but you need clay. I've again recommended in the text below which clay you could buy. And in the next chapter, I will also show you which, uh, which clay I'm using. So clay, make sure you have it. Um, have around 20, 25 kgs to begin with. Yeah. Then we have a water bowl. A water bowl is basically going to be, you know, your companion always next to your clay and on your wheel. It's, it's where you're going to be taking water from to be able to make a pot. Okay, next is your potter's stool. So potter's stool is basically what I'm sitting on. It's, it's nothing but a stool. There are also some companies um, who make wheels. They also make adjustable potter's wheel stools, uh, which basically, you know, you have different levels. Uh, the levels are good to have because sometimes when you know you be get a, become an advanced potter and you throw big pieces of clay, you have to sometimes sit up. So an adjustable stool makes it easier. So a potter's stool, either a custom made by a carpenter or an adjustable stool that you can purchase off online directly, either of them works. Dimensions are in the text below. Then you have two side stools. Now your side stools can be up to your design, right? Now you can have like a L-shaped table. You can have like a U-shaped, like, you know, three-walled table so that, you know, you feel like you, you're in a station, yeah? Um, some of us like me like two stools on either sides. Here I have a longish 
thinner stool. Uh, you know, sometimes it helps because, you know, um, when I have nine to ten students in my studio, I don't want them to have very wide stools and, you know, it makes the space very cramped up. So if you have a smaller studio or you have a smaller space for a home studio, a thin side stool also works. Yeah, I'm giving you guys options because I don't want you to feel that only, you know, getting big and, you know, expensive things only work. No, you can even get a small little table which, you know, is, is available in your house. And if you want, you know, your carpentry to match together, you can always get everything done together. This is, this side stool is also my uh, potter's stool. So I'm also sitting on a, a similar, uh, an identical one like this. I'm also sitting one. Um, so, you know, have basically stools on the side or tables. Over here, you're going to be keeping your tools, your clay, your cup of tea uh, and your pots, basically. So you want nice, sturdy side stools. All right. Now, for these things. One, I'm not a potter who likes to wear aprons. I'm the potter who keeps some clothes just for pottery so that even if they get mucky and I have to wash them every day and, they, you know, they get faded or, you know, torn, I don't really care. So I've, I've put aside some clothes just for pottery. If you are not that person and maybe you're not, you can get yourself an apron. Now, a pottery apron is slightly different from a cooking apron. So, a cooking apron does not work, guys. <clears throat> you have something like a slit over here. So, suppose I was wearing this here. This slit over here basically takes care of my thighs, my legs. Why? Because I'm going to be splashing clay all over. So, this slit kind of helps and that's, that is usually only possible in a potter's apron. So get yourself an apron, guys. Don't soil your clothes. Then you have a hand towel. Hand towels are really great. Um, just have one, yeah? You'll, you'll always need them. Plastic bags. Now, these this plastic bag, uh, normally your clay will come in these big plastic bags. So you just have to, you know, recycle those and you, you will have plenty very soon. To start with, if you don't have, get yourself a plastic bag. Plastic bags will normally be for keeping clay in and also for covering your pots that you just make. We don't want our uh, pots to dry off really quickly or we have to basically maintain their speeds of drying. So plastic bags are used for that. Okay, next up are your bats. B-A-T, bats. Now these bats are usually, I mean their main function, what are they made for, is to be able to attach it on the wheel head directly wheel head is this part of the wheel the bat is attached on the wheel head using screws and when you are making a very big pot that you know if i if i pick up from the wheel head directly it can get distorted in that scenario i will use a bat because a bat i can just you know pick up directly without distorting the pot's shape in our course we can either use it like that i have no problem if you actually use it for that reason um, but because we are be, we'll be working with only small amounts of clay, you don't really need it. But these bats in our course are going to be for keeping pots on the side. When I make a pot, I want to keep them on the side. If you're thinking of doing pottery for some time, don't, uh, you definitely need bats. And not only two, you will need around 20. But to start with, in a beginner's course, I just need you to get two of them. Okay, don't go overboard and buy lots, just two is enough. All right, then you have the very self-explanatory packaging, pottery toolkit, yeah? A pottery toolkit is basically now, uh, is basically the basic kit that every beginner student should have. And you know, all of us, when we are in any art form, craft form, any profession, our tools always keep adding on as, as we keep increasing our skill sets. So for a beginner's course, you do not need more than this. Now, when you go to a supply store, when you check out an online store, there will be so many things you can buy. It's like a candy land. You can really burn a hole in your pocket, okay? So believe me when I say this, just to start with, just for my course, maybe just control that shopping urge and just get this. Now, why am I showing you this is because this is one kit that is available everywhere around the world. Uh, similar packaging, it may change here and there, but it is super common, very easy to buy, and it's cheap, yeah? So you won't have any accessibility issues. Um, 
The problem is that they, it's not very great in quality. Yeah, easy to buy, yeah, but and cheap, but not great in quality. So as you go forward, you can definitely upgrade your tools. You know, you can buy a better sponge for sure. You can buy a better cutting wire for sure and your trimming tools as well. So as we proceed on, I will talk more about these tools, but for now, get this. All right, so in our wheel throwing space, again, reminding you from our first chapter that wheel throwing is not throwing the wheel, it's making a pot on the wheel, that is throwing, yeah? So I will be repeatedly using this word wheel throwing, so I hope you just get used to it, yeah? Uh, so in our wheel throwing space, that is all we need for this course. If you want to shop more, go for it. I don't recommend it, okay? Maybe we can do an intermediate course together later on in the future. That time, we'll talk about more tools. Right now, that's all it is. Um, all right, so let's go to our preparation of clay table. And there we will see what do we need for our prepare, prepping of clay. Okay, so we've prepped our wheel area for our home studio. Now we're going to prep our wedging area. Now, first of all, what is wedging, right? Uh, of course, there's an entire chapter on it after this, uh, but wedging is nothing but preparing of clay, yeah? So what do we, and, and preparing of clay is not done one time. We do this every class before every time we sit on the wheel, we prepare the clay. So it's as important or actually, it's even more important than making the pot because you can't really make the pot if your clay is not prepped. Um, I deviate, I'm sorry, you'll see this often in this course. Uh, but what you need for preparation of clay is, first of all, a preparation table. Do you see the table that I'm on? Um, again, furniture dimensions are on the text, so don't worry about that. So, first of all, we need a, we need a surface to prepare our clay. Now, this surface has to be water resistant. It has to be, on the other hand, be able to absorb the water which is basically a certain kind of wood. And then you need it at a certain height so that you can, you know, work well with it. Uh, you know, if, if some of you have made bread or pasta or, you know, rotis, uh, we have to knead our dough as well. So it is, it's not exactly like that, but that is the movement, uh, you know, it is similar to. So for your imagery, you can imagine that you need a surface just like that. So uh, what we do is that, now I have a long one. Why? Because I take courses and we have a lot of students working on these tables. For you, what you actually need, I'm going to get this out of the way for now. What you actually need is maybe, like if the smallest that you're going for is just this much, yeah? Like around uh, one and a half to two feet to one and a half to two feet is also good for you if you're short of space, yeah? If you are not short of space, but you still don't want to go for this long, maybe because your space will get crapped up, a, a very um, nice size that I like of tables is a four feet by two feet in length and width, uh, respectively. So that kind of a table also will help you in drying your clay out certain times, in being able to prepare your clay, and sometimes even hand building and clay modeling. Um, so four feet by two feet is a nice size if you're working by yourself. If you're short of space, even two by two is great. Now that is a wedging table. I have mentioned not only the furniture dimensions in the text below, but also what kind of wood uh, you can go for and uh, which, you know, is water resistant. It is tough be, to be able to take that much quantity of clay and weight of clay. Uh, just make sure that when you're getting your table made by a carpenter, that the legs are also made with hard wood. Sometimes, just to reduce costs, a lot of carpenters will recommend you to get, you know, metal, uh, metal legs because they don't really know what you're going to be using it for. So, make sure that you're getting hard wood and not any other material because you need the legs to be very strong. Now, imagine, you know, this course, we're just using 2 kgs. But, you know, in the coming future, if you're continuing with pottery, you'll be working with 10 kgs, 20 kgs on the table. And you don't want to be reinvesting in these tables. These tables, uh, if you're getting a custom made with a good wood, is going to cost you a bit. You want this table to be with you till you are a potter. They can actually last 
long, like really long, as long as you. So make sure you get something that is of good quality. You can reduce in size because you can always add on to the size, but don't compromise on the quality of the wood. Now, second option for a lot of people who are not, you know, maybe you don't want to invest so much to start with. Another issue could be your house is really small. You don't, you can't have a table in it. Or another reason could also be that, um, you know, you want to start your course quickly and this cup, this table is going to take around three weeks to four weeks to get made, right? So what I would recommend would be in that case is something known as a wedging board. Now wedging board can also be bought in addition to a wedging table because having two is really no problem. On it. Honestly, it'll help you in the coming future in pottery. Um, but if you can't get a table, definitely get a wedging board. It is way cheaper. It's around 1000 rupees uh, as far as I know. I think maybe a little bit more in some other areas and um, different sizes also matter the prices. So a wedging board is nothing but a wooden frame where you'll have a canvas cloth is tightly, you know, um, stuck onto it on the sides. So what you do is because you have to prep clay with a, um, you know, by with bending forward, this wedging board tends to move, right, with that much clay. So what I normally suggest is to put it against a wall, maybe in a corner of the room or against a wall at least, on the ground, you can be on your knees and you can prepare the clay. This is the movement of preparation of clay. So wedging board or wedging table, I don't mind either to be able to do this course. Yes, up to your convenience level. And you can always start off with a board, see if you're interested in getting a table and then go up with it. Yeah, I'm always, always for uh, students starting off slow. It's always the nicer way to go about, okay? So we're done with the wedging table topic. Details will be at the text below. Next up to prepare clay. I mean, I have already mentioned it in the, in the previous section of the wheel throwing prep, but clay. Over here, I have white colored stoneware. Um, this clay is really nice. It's super buttery and soft. Uh, it really depends on you if you want to buy white to start with. Um, what you could do is you could also get terracotta or earthenware just in case, just in case, uh, you know, you don't want to get stoneware to start with, you can get terracotta. Now, why would you not want to get stoneware? If you've read the introduction to pottery, maybe you've made a little decision, but if you've not read introduction to pottery, uh, first of all, I highly recommend you do. If uh, but I still want to repeat it because we're talking about clay, that sometimes stoneware can be a little intimidating for people to start with because it needs to be glazed. And in terracotta you or earthenware, you don't need glazing. You can also just make pots and use it as is. It's not recommended for food, but you can definitely drink water out of it. Um, so yeah, it's not very, you know, you, you can't, it's not very functional for a lot of things, but a lot of beginners, because they're a little scared to use stoneware and to start glazing and firing, they tend to start with terracotta. Um, I don't mind terracotta. I don't mind you using even stoneware. You can always start off with stoneware, practice lots of it. And then when you're in a position to fire, glaze, maybe you've taken more courses with me or anybody else, you can always glaze your articles at that time. You can always start off with stoneware. I would even recommend you to. Uh, yeah, so what I have is white stoneware. You may find even brown stoneware, gray stoneware, um, super white. This is slightly pale. So don't worry about those things. Get something that's reasonable for you. Uh, brown stoneware is also another one of my favorite choices. And this one's my second favorite choice. Okay, so clay. This is around 10 kgs of clay. I would recommend two of these just for this course. Okay. Next you need is a simple weighing machine. Um, you can get a digital one, yes, and you, or you could get this. A weighing machine, this is very similar to what you use even in the kitchens, five kg is max. It's very durable, I love it, yeah? So a weighing machine. And then you have is a bowl and a scraper. This is nothing but a painter's scraper, guys. Uh, nothing really complicated. You can get it from a hardware store. And this bowl can be of any material, it can be plastic, wood, 
steal anything you find in your house. You don't have to specially go out and buy it. Once you start making pots, you can always make one for yourself. Now, what is these two things for? When we are preparing clay, we get a lot of dry clay on the surface, which I don't want to just chuck and, you know, put it in the garbage can. So what I do is I scrape the dry clay and I collect it here. And this dry clay gets recycled back to clay. Um, it may seem like it's such a small amount of clay. Why can't I just chuck it? When you do pottery, you'll understand we're always producing so much dry clay and wet clay. It's just such a, it's just a habit to be able to, uh, to recycle all of it to the tea, or at least as much as it's possible for you, yeah? So get a bowl and a scraper. Uh, even if you're not scrape, uh, even if you're not recycling that clay, you still need to clean off your table to be able to prepare. Okay. So now this is all I need for preparation of clay. Um, here, next I'm going to talk about storing of clay, okay? Um, when, I, when you will start making pots, you will realize that you will not only have ready clay which come like this from suppliers, you will also have dry clay in different forms. You will also have wet clay. Now, wet clay is usually what gets collected in the water bowl. Remember in the previous video, we uh, talked about a water bowl that we need for our wheel throwing prep, home studio, right? So in the water bowl, I'm constantly, you know, putting water and a lot of clay that I'm, you know, that I'm using to make the pot, it keeps coming off in liquid form. Yeah, like creamy, creamy clay keeps coming off in my hands. And all of that goes back into the water bowl. So my water bowl at the end of a few hours of practice becomes this creamy um, slurry. Yeah, so we call it slurry. So that slurry is basically stored in a bucket and then we recycle that slurry back into clay. So um, what we're going to do now is instead of jumping right into recycling and overwhelming yourself, what we're going to do is we're going to keep recycling for another day not even another day, let's put it to our end of the course, yeah? Right after the course, when you know how to make your forms and pots and you're feeling comfortable, then we will talk about recycling. So you're in a position to absorb that process because it can be a little overwhelming to start with at this point. But what I want you to do till that time is to be able to segregate your clay. Like we segregate garbage, right? Not to use that reference, but it's, it's pretty similar. So what I want you guys to do is this size or slightly bigger size. I need you guys to buy three of these. It doesn't have to be wide. It doesn't have to be this size. Any bucket, five liter, nine liter, 14 liters with a lid is what I need you for storing clay. The first bucket will have ready clay, the soft clay that is ready from a supplier. The second bucket will have any form of dry clay. It could be bits from the prepping table. It could be pots that you've made, which you don't want to fire in the future. Uh, th those are also dry clay examples. So all of that go into dry clay. And the third bucket will be all your slurry from your water bowl. Any Every day when you work on your wheel, you will have a water bowl full of clay. That water bowl will go into your slurry bucket. Yes. So these three buckets, if you have segregated, recycling will be super easy for you. Yeah. And you will collect the slurry and the dry clay and the ready clay till the bucket can hold it. So if you want to recycle, say once in two months, you can buy a bigger bucket so it can store more. If you're like, no, no, I rather do it weekly. You can always have small buckets. So not much gets accumulated. So the size I recommend is around 9 liters to 14 liters. Um, I, because I run a whole school, I have this big, uh, you know, these big uh, Syntex, they're known as Syntex buckets. Uh, they're huge, basically. So I am able to recycle after two months with nine students working every day, right? So, so that's a very huge size. You don't need to get into that. 9 liters or 14 liters, three to maybe, you know, because you're going shopping, buy one extra. We always need buckets for some reason or the other, yeah? So basically just, just repeating this one point, we're going to be storing the clay in different forms in these buckets. We will recycle them after 
our course is done, basically the last chapter. That's only because I don't want to overwhelm you with that process. If you have watched my Instagram posts or any other Potter's Instagram posts and you know how recycling looks like, great. You can even go ahead with recycling and even try it out with small batches. Till then, just wait for my chapter and store your clay well, segregate it properly and keep the lid closed so it doesn't collect any dust, yeah? All right, so our home studio prep is done, guys. Go on to the next chapter only when you're done with prepping. I don't want you to start off the course without arranging for everything. And um, that's about it. I will see you in the next chapter. Bye-bye.